Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good afternoon, everyone who is here at the moment. Appreciate you joining us for this webinar on Cloud Access Security Brokers. It's about a minute before our two o'clock start time, two o'clock Eastern start time. So we're gonna give everybody just a minute to head into the webinar and then we'll get started. For our webinar series, uh, this month we are covering Cloud Access Security Brokers. My name is Frank Ureña. I'm a principal architect at Author Computer Group, covering uh, by primarily the security stack uh, on Microsoft. And we're going to be talking today about Cloud Access Security Brokers. So to get underway, I did want to start off with a poll question for everybody who is currently logged in. And that question is very simply, is your organization currently using a CASB? Just want to get a pulse for familiarity and how many are out there using it currently. Give another few seconds. Okay, it looks like the majority, 64%, are not using a cloud access security broker. So this will be some relevant information. Now, as you know, we are gonna be talking a little bit uh, generically about CASBs, but then uh, honing in specifically around Microsoft cloud access or cloud app security, uh, the Microsoft uh, CASB solution and particularly around how it can work alongside uh, conditional access as an app control measure uh, to greater secure your environment. <clears throat> so uh, real quick, just an introduction slide for those of you who may not be familiar with Oxford Computer Group. Uh, we are an ident identity-driven security firm, uh, having partnered with Microsoft pretty much since our inception. Um, we are a leader in the identity and access management space and also in hybrid identity solutions. Uh, we've done over 700 plus enterprise projects around the world with over 7 million Office 365 seats being deployed. And we have been named Microsoft Identity Partner of the Year a number of occasions. And we do have a deep connection with the identity team at Microsoft, meeting with them at least on a monthly basis and being involved in discussions around uh, the roadmap and their future. <clears throat> so, uh, CASBs, uh, a new acronym for our lexicon. Uh, basically, uh, what is a CASB? A Cloud Access Security Broker is what it stands for, and it's a central data and authentication and encryption hub for your organization. Uh, it can include not only uh, cloud resources, but also on-premise applications that you want to secure and gain visibility and insight into. Uh, and it can also include managed and unmanaged devices, such as the uh, BYOD devices that many of your users may be using to access corporate resources. And why are they important? Well, <clears throat> we know that uh, the landscape has changed the past 10 years or so. Uh, cloud computing, mobile computing is now the new norm. Uh, and we see that more than ever now with uh, the, ma the majority of us in uh, isolation and quarantine, uh, work from home scenarios, it's even become even more important. Uh, those data assets that you're trying to secure are no longer centrally located behind those corporate firewalls. Uh, and you do have that decentralized uh, mix or uh, decentralized workforce that's using a mix of managed and unmanaged devices, uh, even in even in the good times, right? Uh, when we're out of this pandemic, that'll be the the new norm or has been the, the norm for users to work from wherever, uh, from home, from a coffee shop, from a client's uh, location, or from the corporate office using, again, a mix of corporate-owned and managed devices and their own devices. Now, all of these factors, uh, of course, increase risk to the enterprise, 
uh, as to where data resides and how it becomes more decentralized. Uh, from a visual representation, we know the, the old versus new. You might have seen this before or something similar. This kind of represents the old castle and moat security model uh, of yesteryear where you had your remote employee or untrusted client on the outside. And then you had a series of firewalls uh, that segmented your network. You had a DMZ, you had a trusted network, uh, and then maybe with a higher uh, privileged area as well. Uh, and again, these were all controlled by your, your firewalls. And um, while your exterior perimeter might have been very well secured and prevented any unauthorized access, uh, there was still the problem of the inside, uh, the inside man or the 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 insider threat uh, that was going to be compromising your data. Of course, the new model is uh, more akin to what this graphic represents, where you have a control plane that asks as a uh, a central coordinator. Um, and that central coordinator uh, is there to restrict access to resources uh, from unauthorized and unauthenticated users and devices. Uh, but you can even go further and have fine-grained policies, uh, such as the type of dev device that they're accessing, the time of day, the application type, where they're located. All of these can be centrally located. Uh, and that's where uh, Azure AD, or, or uh, when we're talking Microsoft, Azure AD comes in, but other identity providers, uh, such as Okta, for instance, act as that control plane and can uh, mitigate that access and control that access to your uh, resources. And that's where the CASB role uh, comes in as a security model. Uh, it gives your, your organization a deeper visibility into cloud and SaaS usage. You get uh, details such as individual file names uh, and data elements. Uh, those are recorded in the CASB. Uh, and really, CASBs are becoming as equally important as firewalls were uh, in the early days of computing, um, where now you know, Gartner is predicting that by 2022, 60% of large enterprises will be using uh, CASBs. And Forrester predicts that by 2023, this will be a $112.7 billion market. Uh, it's no surprise then that if you look at the CASB marketplace today in 2020, um, the past few years have seen uh, a buying spree. Many of the major uh, security vendors have uh, bought. Uh, really, this has become a situation where you've had organizations that started out as CASB providers or network security providers, and they were bought by the bigger players. Starting in August 2015 with Bluecoat uh, buying Prospexus, uh, Microsoft, of course, and of course, in September of 2015, uh, buying Adalom. Uh, and then if you look at the timeline, you had IBM, uh, Blue Coat again, buying another CASB provider, Elastica, Semantic then buy, buying Blue Coat in August 2016, Cisco got into the game, Oracle, uh, Proofpoint, uh, and uh, Forcepoint, and McAfee at the tail end of the buying spree, where there's really just a handful of independent CASB providers now uh, with the majority having been acquired uh, to the bigger uh, players in the landscape. Uh, but again, just showing the importance uh, that the, the marketplace uh, saw in, uh, in CASB solutions and how they were going to fit into their overall security strategy. Uh, and CASB themselves have continued to evolve. Uh, initially, they were used as a discovery tool for shadow IT. You might have heard that term basically just trying to discover where users and uh, departments in, in, in the organizations may have, you know, just by virtue of the fact that they had a credit card and can sign up for a subscription, went out and bought a cloud services, anything ranging from, you know, CRM solutions for the marketing department to cloud storage like Box, Dropbox and others, uh, to even some infrastructure like AWS or databases in the cloud all without the watchful eye of, of IT being able to govern how that data was being accessed. Uh, and IT departments often found, once they did a, a discovery, that the cloud application usage was often 10 times higher than they had themselves estimated in the organization. So this underscored 
uh, certainly a need for tools to get that cloud access under control. And, and that's where CASBs come in. Uh, modern CASBs are full featured. Uh, they're able to integrate with other solutions. Uh, they work well with your uh, data loss prevention systems, uh, IDAS providers, and other tools to uh, provide that deeper control over that cloud data. Uh, compliance, of course, has played a very important role in why organizations adopt CASB solutions uh, with GDPR, uh, HIPAA, SOX, other regulations uh, that demand increased control of data governance. Uh, so CASBs are able to pinpoint areas where an organization uh, may be at greater risk. <clears throat> So that's basically our kind of introduction uh, to CASBs uh, and what they are and why they're important, why they really should have a place in, in your organization if you have a lot of uh, cloud usage or are um, starting your journey, your, your, your path uh, to adopting you know, third-party SaaS applications uh, for cloud. Uh, so with that in mind, we're going to take a look at Microsoft Cloud App Security in a little, in a little detail, specifically around conditional access app control. Uh, now, conditional access itself has been part of uh, Azure AD for some time now, and conditional access policies are basically policies designed around uh, granting users access to uh, applications in the organizations, and these could be cloud applications first-party applications like Office 365, you know, your Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and third-party SaaS applications as well. Uh, conditional access policies can enforce whether or not a user has to uh, provide stepped-up authentication uh, through MFA, for example, or whether uh, they have to provide um, additional authentication because their sign-in has been deemed risky, could be because they're coming in from a location that is unknown or a location that uh, has been known to uh, be common to threat actors, such as, you know, foreign country, overseas travel. Um, so now conditional access uh, tied together with uh, cloud app security provides a greater uh, visibility and control uh, to to your applications. Um, some of the top use cases, um, and this, this could apply across the board to CASBs in general, but when it, when it applies to cloud app security itself, uh, we see that there are four main areas where users are able to access your cloud resources and your applications, uh, which, which again includes on-premise resources uh, that are being hosted uh, through, uh, through the cloud. Uh, obviously, there's the corporate headquarters, uh, the traditional way that users access applications, just being uh, logged in from their desks at the office. Um, there's the public or home Wi-Fi connection. You have external users, business partners, and in some cases, perhaps even uh, direct-to-consumer in, in a B2C model that are accessing applications. And uh, these can be coming over uh, both managed but also unmanaged devices. So what we're going to look at specifically today is uh, that control and monitor, uh, how to control and monitor access in real time uh, to some of these applications that you may have in place. Uh, from an architecture standpoint, um, basically what you're looking at, uh, starting with the uh, sort of the mid top left here of the user uh, coming in and wanting to access an application such as O365 or uh, Box, uh, as, a, as an example, uh, that request is gonna be, a request for sign-in is going to be um, redirected to your IDP, and in our case, it's Azure AD, that we are hosting uh, our applications through Azure AD. Uh, Azure AD then is going to do a check to see is there a conditional access policy that, that matches for this application? If the answer is no, then the user is just redirected back to the application and they get to work uh, within that application as normal uh, without any monitor being put uh, on their session. If the answer is yes, uh, then that's redirected uh, to 
the box here which says, is there a CAS access policy that blocks this request? Uh, if the answer is yes, um, then the user is going to be redirected to the MCAS session servers. Um, and then that data flow, which is a dotted line, is going to uh, connect back up to the third party application. But all of that, the data during that session is going to be redirected to the MCAS session servers where the further inspection can occur. Uh, and then further down in, in more granularity, there's another check that says, okay, what is the user doing? Is the user uploading, downloading, trying to copy paste data from this location? And if so, is there a content inspection or protection uh, policy enabled for this session? If the answer is yes, uh, then for instance, Azure Information Protection, which is integrated as part of the data classification service in Microsoft, will kick in and, and uh, provide the necessary uh, controls for that data that's being accessed. Uh, so we're gonna see some of this in action. I have two use cases that um, I wanted to highlight. Uh, and of course, there, there could be more, but since we're time limited, I decided to pick two. And the first is, uh, being able to block download of sensitive data from SharePoint Online using uh, real-time monitoring. So I'm going to end the PowerPoint here. And let me just switch my screen. And so what you should be seeing on your screen is my uh, Azure portal. Uh, I am signed into my Azure portal. I'm in the security center because I'm going to first go to my conditional access policy. And I've already created this policy for the demo, but I'll, I'll step through it here. This is a CAS policy for Office 365. Uh, I've scoped it to a specific user. I've scoped it to uh, Office 65 and, and SharePoint, although in this case, I could actually just do O365 and it'll cover everything in SharePoint. Uh, and then I, in the session control here, I've selected a custom policy and I have uh, saved it. So now this is an enabled policy. Uh, and once I did that, I shoot over to my Cloud App Security portal. And I'll filter these out by session policy. Um, actually, first, let me show you, if I go to Conditional Access App Control, you'll see that Microsoft SharePoint Online is connected uh, with Azure AD Conditional Access. So this is basically telling me that that Conditional Access policy that I've configured is now being picked up and seen by Cloud App Security. Uh, and because they they are now connected and talking to each other, I can create additional policies for controlling that access. So I go to my control area here of uh, Cloud App Security, and I'm gonna select the session policy. You have two options here for these uh, for these policies. An access policy is to govern access on on mobile and desktop, and the session policy is for a browser based. So because I'm working in a browser, I'll use the session policy. Uh, for my policy template, I'm going to use a template here that says block download based on real-time content inspection. And what this will do is set up this template, which allows me to uh, provide further information, such as um, what type of control. So I'm going to do a con control file download with a DLP. And I'm going to add some conditions here uh, to filter this. So I'm going to say that the... Uh, application, the app is SharePoint Online. And I can further scope it down to user. So I'm gonna say that the user is Allison here as my test user. And then my inspection method, I'm gonna use the data classification service. The difference here is uh, the data classification service is, uh, works across all of the Microsoft security workloads. So. Uh, for instance, if you're using Microsoft uh, DLP, uh, which is what you would see under the protection.office um, uh, portal, uh, all of these, all of these uh, templates here, for instance, to be able to, to see 
the, for instance, U.S. Social Security numbers, which, which we're going to use in our example here, um, work across all of these different uh, Microsoft security workloads. So it's really nice because now you don't have to create separate policies for each of the platforms. They, they'll use that data classification service and work across uh, the board uh, for all of these applications. Uh, having done that, I'm going to say I'm going to select sensitive information types. So you notice here, these are the same sensitive information types that we saw in uh, the protection portal. I'll filter this down using Social Security, and I select this one here. Um, and what is my action? Well, I have three options I can test. So just monitor activity, and this is usually what you want to do first. Um, when you're setting up a policy, test it, and then view the activity log and just see exactly how data is being accessed and who would be impacted so that you can inform your decision uh, when you go to uh, go to an enforcement posture for these policies. Um, you have block, which is what we're going to do, um, and then there's also protect. So if I choose protect, I can for instance, um, select a, a classification label that I have configured uh, in my uh, Azure Information Protection uh, area uh, to apply to any, any documents that may be downloaded. So there may be an instance where uh, you set up a policy for uh, a certain group of people that do that are authorized to download uh, data from SharePoint, but you want to make sure that anything that they download is given the appropriate um, protection template so that that file becomes encrypted and is labeled appropriately and um, cannot be accessed by unauthorized individuals. Uh, so now I've already created this policy. I'm going to click cancel here. I'll show you the, the finished product here. So here's our block download based on real-time content. And now let's, let's see what happens. So I'm going to switch over to my user screen. <clears throat> so now I am logged in as a user. I'm logged in as Allison. You can see here she's accessing her applications through the My Applications portal. So these are all the applications that she's been granted access to uh, in Azure AD. Uh, most of these are multi 65, but there is a third party app here, Dropbox, which we're going to touch on for our second use case. Uh, but now when she goes to uh, access SharePoint, the first thing that she's going to see, and this is, again, talking about that architecture, right? So if we look at our URL, we see how the authentication has been redirected uh, to my MCAS uh, session servers. And the user gets a message saying that access to Microsoft SharePoint is online is being monitored. Uh, again, just given that user visibility, uh, that their session is being monitored. And now I can click continue the Microsoft SharePoint. Once I do that, uh, I have a site that I've been granted access to. I have some documents here. And now I'm working from home. I'm on my unmanaged device. Um, but I want to access uh, this, this document here. So I'm going to bring up, because I have a downloaded copy of this file. Just give me one second, just so you can see what's in it. Uh, so here's our this sample data file. Um, as you can see, it's a bunch of names of users, but it has a column called SSN, has a bunch of social security numbers. It even has a column called CCN for what appear to be credit card numbers. Um, so we're going to see what happens if uh, Allison tries to download this file. I click here and I want to take this file because it has a lot of good information that I might be able to sell on the black market and see if I'm able to do that. Well, again, our policy clicked in and our download was blocked. And if I try to open that file that was that did come down, it would just tell us, here was your file. It was blocked because it contained data that is not allowed to be downloaded. <clears throat> so again, providing that further granularity into into your security, I, I prevented the user from being able to take that proprietary data off onto their unmanaged device. And if I go back to Cloud App Security, go to my activity log. And so here we'll see um, 
and the logs uh, takes a takes a couple minutes for them to to build out. But I'll go to one uh, from before. The, this was a little bit early when I was uh, testing. Uh, but you'll see here the download file sample data that XLS has a a blocked symbol who the user is. If I drill further down into it, uh, again I can see where the user was located, uh, the IP addresses that were used, um, which application they were trying to access, and how they were trying to access it, and the date and timestamp. Right. So it will tell me as a as a security practitioner. Uh, that this um, that this user was trying to download this file that's uh, that has this block policy applied to it. So again, again that you can see where where the CASB would would fit in into that control plane because now I'm able to have that uh, extra visibility. Going back to this is going to be a quick transition here. I'm just, Click on the slide. Well, what about third-party uh, applications? As we we just seen an example with uh, Office 65, which is great. It's a it's a Microsoft first-party application. We would expect to have that type of visibility in there. But what about third-party? Uh, well, we have that as well. We're going to do a demonstration um, where we're going to block a copy uh, operation and activity from from Dropbox. So the first thing I want to show is how we connected that. So if I go to my connected apps here in Cloud App Security, I see that I have uh, three connected apps, uh, Office 65, I have Box, and I have Dropbox. Uh, this is basically configured so that I can start seeing that visibility into those applications. Uh, so for instance, if I go to Files, I can see all of the files that are owned by my organization and where they're currently residing. So I can see that there are some files on Dropbox, there's some files on Box here for this user. Uh, I even have some files here on OneDrive and in SharePoint, right? So uh, being able to connect those systems with those APIs. And currently, if we looked at the app connector, we can see which applications are have that capability. We have Amazon Web Services, um, Box, Cisco WebEx, Dropbox, we have G Suite. Azure, Okta, Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Workday, and of course that list will continue to grow. And this is basically allowing us to have those um, deep integrations with those applications so that we can have that visibility and see what's going on. <clears throat> um, if I go back to my conditional access policy, I'll show you that I have another policy here called CAS Policy Dropbox. Where again, I'm in this case, I just selected all users. I didn't scope it to a specific user, uh, at least on the conditional access side. I've selected uh, Dropbox as my application that I want to uh, have this this proxy, the session proxy for. And again, I've selected that custom policy. Um, and going back to our conditional access app control, I can see that Dropbox uh, has been added. Uh, and just a note, if you're doing this or if you're trying to configure this, whenever you set up this conditional access policy for uh, for app control, you just have to you just have to sign in and uh, sign out and sign back into that application. In this case, Dropbox, in order for uh, MCAS to be able to pick it up. And this time, and I won't step through the actual build out, I'll just show you what the finished product looks like. Uh, but I have a policy here called block copy on Dropbox. Um, so this is not based on the template. This is just created brand new. Um, and what I am saying here is that the app is Dropbox. So it, it MCAS is now able to have that visibility into my, uh, app, my enterprise applications that I've configured uh, through Azure AD. And I say the activity type here is cut, cut and copy an item. So I'm basically preventing the user from being able to take text from a document that's now residing on Dropbox and copy it to another location uh, where they may want to be able to take that data. And so the action here is going to be blocked, block that activity. So let's see, let's see this in action. Again, we're going to go back to our user, Allison.
And from my, my apps portal, I'm going to click my Dropbox for business here so I can uh, have single sign on. Again, because I've selected or I've created a, a policy for this, it's going to tell me that access to Dropbox is being monitored. So I want to continue. I say yes. And uh, now I'm, I'm given access to my uh, Dropbox repository. In our example, we're going to assume that Dropbox is a sanctioned app in this organization, um, but we just we're, we're just applying policies around it to prevent unauthorized activity. Uh, so here's my document, but now hey, I know this this uh, session is being monitored, but I still want to take this data because I have other plans for it. So let me try to highlight this and copy. Well, I can't, because again, the policy is preventing that activity, right? So you see, I, I get this message, action is blocked. And if we go back to our uh, Cloud App Security portal, uh, again, I'll just show you where I had this one before. Let me just find another example. Um, let me filter this by users and by application. Okay, here, here's what it would look like. So here it um, picked up the activity of cut copy item, told me it was blocked, and here's a user that was blocked and which application they were blocked from. And it, of course, records IP address location um, uh, for this session. Uh, so even with third-party applications, right, there's uh, a lot you can do uh, for those applications that are connected and you want to uh, have that deeper uh, visibility uh, into the uh, uh, into that session and into even down to the file level and what they're doing. And go back here, and I think that's basically what, what we wanted to show today. Um, of course, if you have any questions, uh, we we have plenty of time for questions here. Uh, but if you wanted to get into a deeper conversation around cloud app security. Uh, feel free to reach out to us um, and uh, we'll be happy to you know, set up some time to, to speak with you further on, on any projects that you may have regarding cloud app security. But we do have a question. Um, uh, is it mandatory to be transparent with regard to the monitoring or can it be done in stealth mode without the user knowledge? Um, as of right now, the and, and uh, you're referring to the um, the uh, message the user gets right basically saying go back to it here so just sort of just so that everybody understands what the question is asking do we have to show this right um and for right now yes it's um it's uh, something that's um kind of mandatory right uh the user has the ability to hide this notification uh, but from an admin control perspective um this is not something that can be uh, hidden at the time. Were there any other questions? Well, if not, we appreciate everyone joining us uh, for uh, our session today. Uh, and again, if there are you know, any questions in, in the future or um, if you have any initiatives going on now, uh, perhaps you're, you're already licensed for uh, MCAS by virtue of your uh, either Microsoft 365 licensing uh, or EMS E3 um, licensing, again, we'd be happy to. Uh, have a conversation and see how we can uh, help you, you know, further deploy. You know, we 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 speak to many organizations, and I've had several clients who 
have started deploying cloud app security, but uh, kind of lost their way. And, and uh, cause there, are, there are a lot of options, a lot of things you can do with it. Um, so we're happy to come in and do an assessment uh, and see how we could further refine uh, your deployment. So thanks everybody, stay safe and uh, have a great day.